beginnings of teaching a sit or a down stay. First you need the sit or the down. So I'll quickly go over how to teach a sit and how to teach a down and really fast. So if you have questions, just write me a text. But to teach a sit, have a treat that your dog is really interested in. If, they're, if you're holding it out and they, they wander off, obviously that's not a reinforcer. So really tiny. I mean, this is like almost the size of the head of a pin for my dog. Just pieces of information. So get used to luring them around, pull their head up over their butt. If you do it too high, you get a hands, you, you get a standing up on back legs. If you do it too low, you get a down or some other weird behavior. So it's really the human getting the behavior. Practice lifting that treat up just over their head. Yes, when they're in the position. Yes. Yes, treats happen, and then, okay, all done. Whatever cue you want to mean, get up. And if they stay sitting, then, okay, yes, reinforce them for getting up. When you're luring a dog, don't give them this treat. They always get another one. And only use the, the lure for maybe the first two or three uh, trials. Next time, just have your hand like this. When, with a pretend treat, lure them into the position, yes, 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 okay. So uh, for a down, from a stand, you just push the treat at a diagonal, yes, 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 yes. If they get up, oh, you know, if they were to get up, oh, all done, no more treats. So the next step is hand signal equals sit, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, so you want you don't want to have a hand signal for sit, you want to have a word too. Uh, if you say whatever word you want to mean sit before you do the hand signal. So Kiko already knows the word sit, so I'm going to use the word pumpkin. So I'm going to say pumpkin, move my hand up, yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm trying to teach her that pumpkin means sit. Put your butt down on the ground. Oops, the tree just gone up my seat. So I'm going to say pumpkin and then move my hand. Yes. Yes. Okay, hold on. Try again. Pumpkin. Yes. Yes. And then the key to adding a new cue. Okay. The key to adding a new cue is putting some time in between. So I'm going to say, okay, go, come here. Pumpkin. Yes. Wait a couple seconds, they're going to think, what does she want me to do? Every time she said pumpkin, she's done this with her hand afterwards. Obviously, she wants me to sit. Pumpkin. And I want some eye contact, too. Yes. Okay. So here are a few little tips. One, get rid of the lure after three trials, otherwise you have a dog dependent on food being in your hand. Two, always remember to release the dog or you'll have an unreliable state. Three, the goal is never to have the dog get up, so if they're getting up, get better reinforcers or go back a step. Four, vary your rewards. Five, start with no distractions. Six, work on duration, distance, and distractions separately before mixing them. Seven, make sure the dog's eyes are not focused on the food when you say yes or click, or you build in a behavior of staring at food, which is what people call begging. I'll go over this in the next continuing video. So here you see me working on distance with Splash. We've already practiced, but when you start, you want to do it in a room with no distraction. One step equals a click and a treat, or a yes and a treat. Two steps, yes, treat. You don't want to keep pushing them further and further. You want to make it variable. So one step, yes, treat. Three steps, yes, treat. Two steps, yes, treat. So they never know whether it's going to get harder or easier. That way they stay excited and interested and having a great time. So with Splash I've worked on moving at different speeds. You know, try to move as organically as possible. Don't do a robotic one, two, three steps away, turn around. Otherwise your dog is going to get up if you move normally. Or maybe you're carrying groceries or if you're carrying their ball, maybe they're not going to stay. So also very reward. So. Maybe they get to get released to play with another dog, get to smell a bush, get to play with a toy, get to go out the door, get to have a variable assortment of treats. So not always the same treat, otherwise they're going to weigh, hmm, my owner always has kibble, and there's a squirrel over there, kibble squirrel. 
where if your dog is looking at you like a jackpot machine, they don't know if they're going to get the ja hit the jackpot on this one. Okay, so keep in mind that the distance you can get away from your dog at home is not going to apply at the park. So you need to work on distance adding distractions. So at the park you would start all over again from one step away from your dog, etc, etc. And I will make a continuing video, so stay tuned.